thanks very much for being that many into the room. I know the day and the day first has been quite long and intense, so thanks very much for being here. Um, I'm going to do a quick on something that you might have heard about uh, Raspberry Pis involving uh, a new project from Google, which is AIY, and we're going to go around it. So, Parker, that's the name of the project that I wanted to do. So what we're going to talk about, it's going to be about some Raspberry, some add-ons that are pretty cool, a little bit of Google systems as well, in order to build this little project um, that was released not so long ago. Why Parker? Because I wanted to give a name, of course, to any uh, AI system like we see in movies, and I came up with Parker for a pretty awesome robot keeping everything ready. Also, Parker, does anybody know who that is? OK, so I'm the only old person in the room. That's great. It's from a TV series called The Thunderbirds, which was known as Les Sentinelles de l'Air. So who am I? My name is Pierre-Yves Baloche. I'm a solution architect at GFI Informatic. Uh, you can have all my details on Twitter and GitHub. Of course, all the codes that is going to be demonstrated and the add-ons is on the GitHub repository. So don't hesitate to. Uh, come and see me about that. And I've been developing for quite some time, uh, mostly in Java, but now I'm working mostly on Python and I'm addicted to it, which is a great thing because I can work during the day on Python for work and I can continue at home with my Raspberry Pis. Also working on Paper, which is also a Python-based uh, platform, which will be interesting to some of you. So safety first, like I say to my daughter, um, if you have any we should not speak his name <laughs> on your phone. If it's on, um, please turn it off. Otherwise, we might have some f funny effect during the presentation. But we'll see later on. You can deactivate it later. Otherwise, we know who you are. So Raspberry Pi, just to sum up, uh, who knows who owns Raspberry Pis? OK, great. Um, so just a, a quick summary about the various families. Um, um, to me, there's th three main categories. The large board computer, where you've got everything included, Ethernet port, USBs, Bluetooth, which is great. Smaller size for the Pi Zero or Pi Zero W, which is much more limited in terms of connectivity, but brings more facility when you're having mobile projects. And also embedded modules. Uh, which we start to see now in uh, more modern devices like TVs where you have a Raspberry and the idea behind that is that you can build up uh, cards where you just plug in the module and whenever the Raspberry Foundation delivers a new product you just have to switch the module I don't have to recreate everything. It's a worldwide success as you might know there's been 12 and a half million units sold since the last five years. Uh, it actually took over the third position in popularity for a general purpose computing platform, which was held by Commodore 64. You yeah, might have heard about that in history lessons. So, watch out. Uh, Raspberry Pi it's a microcomputer, which has full OS application. You can run Docker on it. It's awesome which is completely different from Arduinos, which are microcontroller, no OS, just got embedded in it, just to clarify things. I'm going to skip over those details, but they're really uh, the, the Raspberry Pi uh, flagship, I would say, is the Pi 3, which is um, a quad-core uh, CPU, which a particular instruction set. We'll see later on uh, what's the, the, the difference. And also the Pi Zero W, which is the much smaller version, but much more portable, um, released in February, where it, it embeds directly the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi uh, directly on the board, which is great because the first revision of the Raspberry Pi Zero did not have those, and it has only one USB connector. One of uh, the Raspberry Pi, I would say, strength is its power is the GPIO port where basically you've got a set of pins with various settings that you can uh, connect boards to or even sensors. And the advantage of it is that you can tune it and adapt your code uh, with that function. 
And then, what are you here for? Came the AY project. So it was a surprise first because it started, I don't know if you're following up the Raspberry Pi community magazine, the, the Magpie, and it came up with that tweet uh, at the end of uh, April saying that for some reason the, the new edition was going to be delayed a little bit and it's going to be on the 4th of May. So say, okay, waiting is worthwhile. We'll see about that. And it was because in the post, whoever was uh, registered uh, or subscribed to the magazine, we got the Magpie edition with the full kit of the AI project. And it was a real shocker. It brings Google's power uh, directly for makers. It's a full kit uh, that you can get up and running. The tutorial provided with it is awesome. Uh, in 20 minutes, it's run. All you need to add up is a Raspberry Pi 3 and an SD card. You say, is that it? No, 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 almost. So what's in it? We have one of the main components is the voice hat. It's an extension card that we come and include directly on top of the Raspberry Pi 3. And as you can see, it has lots of various connections. And we're going to use them for a microphone, which is stereo, in order to be able to talk to uh, our little friend. Also, it has a speaker so they can hear its response it's much better. Various cables and, of course, a big red button. It depends on the boxes. And because it's Google, there's cardboard, of course. So the fun part with it is that we can create this little guy. So I'm just going to switch so that the people at the back can see it much better. There you go. A little, a little box. But yep. is that it? No, because Google makes things so much easier that they provide you directly with uh, the image that you can flash onto your SD card and you're all up and running within minutes. So you don't have to worry, okay, what do I have to install? What uh, Git repository do I have to, to pull out? You can do it right away. There's only a little bit more to do, which is configuration into the Google Cloud platform. Because at the heart of the AI project is the Google Assistant uh, project. So before to be able to use it, we have to integrate some of the elements. Uh, simple things really to define the application uh, OAuth uh, key file and then reference the application into our little box. So we're going to try a little demo, live demo and everything. <laughs> Sorry, was not plugged in properly. Okay. So the idea with the um, the functionality is that you get the same thing as the Google Home. The Google Home was released right after, and with that fun with that aspect, it also opens up functionalities because you can have access to it. You don't have to tear out your Google Home box to be able to make funny things with it. So let's try it again. Count to five. Here is a matching video. Nope. <laughs> Count to five. Sorry, I can't help with that yet. Okay, it has its own mind. That's fine. Um, but the thing is pretty closed up. So the idea behind the AI project, as I was saying, is to be able to bring it to the maker's way. So how can we do it? That day when I received that, I was at uh, my place, and I said, darling, let's automate the house. Of course, I was alone. So that was a good thing, because as you say in France, qui ne dit mot consent, so <laughs> I was able to do whatever I wanted to do. So we're going to add a little bit more goodies, like lights, controls of the house, and of course, more power. So first things to do, we're going to hand up uh, with a little bit of more visual notification, like LEDs, has a big red button, or in that case, green. Um, we're going to add up a bit more uh, flashy elements, like the Pyromini Blinked Visual Adbox, which is a nice LED uh, panel that you can control that only uses 
very few pins of the GPIO. We'll come back later on. Um, also, in order to make home automation, we're going to use um, a Raspberry, funny name, uh, board which is using the Z-Wave uh, protocol in order that is widespread in order to do home automation. Also, the great thing about it is that it provides uh, a full web interface and API to be able to control all the elements uh, within the house. Also, it has a very limited GPIO footprint, only a different uh, numbers. And as I was saying, it comes up either with a mobile interface for your phone, there's also a full client, or if you want to use a tablet or a computer, it gives the whole element. The great thing is that whenever you discover one of the automation home component, so I used uh, a blind shutter and also a connected plug, um, they're also compatible. They all use the Z-Wave um, protocol. And in that sense, it's fully integrated with the board. Of course, if you want to do more stuff, like adding relays, that's the advantage of working with a Raspberry. You can just plug them in. It's uh, it's pretty easy. But you're going to tell me, isn't there a little connectivity problem? We have one Raspberry. We've got at least three boards. The voice hat, the blinking LED element, and the Raspberry board. So let's get back to the GPIO. Because the guy from Google, they really uh, made the thing very easy, in the sense that you still are able to access your GPIOs through the voice hat that you add up on top of your Raspberry Pi. So if you have existing components that you want to reconnect, you can still use them. Also, it extends the scope of what you can do with the board. Uh, there's uh, servos that you can uh, connect directly to the board or motors. You just add up a little bit of uh, power extension. And in that sense, you can have moving robots as well controlled by your device. So there's no problem. That gives you a little bit like this. OK, you can see the little difference right now. Yeah, it has googly eyes. Ah. Sorry. Now you can see it. OK. Is it l no? I'm supposed to be seeing a little bit of animation. Or not. <coughs> Go. No, it doesn't work. OK. <laughs> Life coding. Uh, so I'm going to turn it a little bit. So as you can see, it has the LEDs that is using uh, the color code from Google in order to also respond to the very famous keyword that we all know. So. If I go there and say, hey, Google, tell me a joke. One joke coming up. How do bovines do math? With a calculator. OK, we'll come back for the sense of humor. It's, <laughs> wait, it's, I don't know, British something. Um, so the idea is that you really can add up loads of things. As you can see, you can also add up little LCDs on the side, you can add up uh, other components uh, to boost up all the elements of the project. There we go. Um, also, let's take a little trip back to my home. Of course, I could not bring the home here. So. Is that right? Hmm. That's the problem when you lose the focus on the mouse. There it goes. OK, Google. Wave off the blind switch in the kitchen. Glad I could help. And it closed. And nobody pushed the button that you can see on the right hand side. <laughs> so you're going to say, OK, what's the story with the wave word? Why didn't you say just open up or close the gates or close the, the shutters? The thing is that. With Google uh, Assistant, you already have reserved keywords. 
So I cannot use open, close, because those things, they are already planned to be used uh, into existing project, because by default, the uh, Google Assistant is getting more and more uh, traction from manufacturers like uh, Philips U for the lamps. And there's also interaction with other uh, home automation system. So some of the keywords are already reserved. So I used uh, Z-Wave protocol, so I used the word wave to be able to do something. And in the, the way to, uh, to be able to nominate whatever I'm doing is that I named my components like the blind in the kitchen. The kitchen is a zone in my house, and the blind is one component. So when I'm talking to the Google Assistant, it just pulls out from the REST API of um, the Z-Wave system all the elements, makes all the calculation for the, the word in the proper wording to activate or deactivate, and then it moves on. I'm not going to try out. There's a plug there that um, Promise that we're not going to see, but I can show you the demo later on. Um, that you can also activate that way, and that one is the plug, uh, the word plug into the living room. So you can just sit back and uh, start your movie and ask Google uh, to work and to launch everything. So as I was saying, um, what we have uh, is an LCD that you can add up. You can add up RFD uh, card reader, so that, for example, if you want to add up systems uh, like Google Assistant or uh, Dialogflow uh, functionality, maybe to monitor your build system, you can validate with a physical action that it's really you. It's not just an API call. So what's under the hood? Uh, just a little fallback on the differences between the raspberries. Some of the elements are not currently supported by all platform. Most of them, all of them are supported by the Raspberry 3 but not all of them into the Pi Zero. So you can still use uh, Google Assistant functionality on Pi Zero, but it will be slightly different, but it's great fun to do. So what else can we do? We can work uh, with Google Assistant, of course. You can cre create uh, your own actions, like I did. All the, action, all the code is in the uh, 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 GitHub repository. Also. Um, as some of you might have seen the, this morning's presentation, you can add up a dialogue flow in it. So you can talk to your assistant like, OK, Google, talk to my test app. OK, let's get the test version of my test app. Welcome to your build system. Which build status would you like to check? Hydrogen or helium? Mm, hydrogen. Everything is okie dokie. Excellent. No problem on the build. Travis is working fine. And also, if you're not too fun or enjoy about deal. Wo yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of working uh, of <laughs> like any assistant, you unplug it at the end. Uh, you can also work on Android things. And that way, you can develop using Android directly migrate your application, and you can work on that. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Google Assistant, there was a great talk this morning by Vasim and Guillaume. If you want to see how can you plug and extend that little guy using Dialogflow, the former API.ai, uh, go and check out their replay. Questions? I have one for you. I have first. <laughs> um, if you know the answer, you raise your hand. That's very important. What was the name of the TV series where Parker was? Thunderbird. Come up. Ta da! Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. This is a collection editor, we got the full kit, not the raspberry, I'm sorry. <laughs> But you can have a great fun with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have time for questions or? Yeah. Um. I don't know. En français ou en anglais? Can we ask a question to our Google Assistant in our Android phone? Like, uh, like, the, bo 
like the box. Yeah, um, you can use the same thing in the it's Google Assistant. Uh, so you can use it either on your phone or on the uh, Google AI project. Um, even if you develop your own assistant, uh, which is the great thing, is that you always have to start talking to uh, the Google Assistant API, but then you can talk to somebody else, I mean, your other app. And you can do that either on your phone or on the elements. Then if you want to have feedbacks on that, indeed you can have the communication using Google Cloud Messaging or that publishing and subscriber systems to be able to trigger something with your, your watch or your phone and then to have that little guy receive the instruction and then trigger something at home. Like, I forgot to close the blind, close the blind. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you hear me. Um, it, how hard is it to connect with um, custom components, like for example, if you already have switches in your, in your home, mm -hmm. and how hard is it to connect them? Uh, do you have to buy specific components? No, basically you can buy, I would say command components, like the relays or sensors, um, as long as they have like serial connections, or depending on the pin numbers that you have to use if you already connect them to a Raspberry Pi, um, you can connect them. Of course, the problem comes up when you have same elements coming up on this, I mean, different uh, components coming up with the same GPIO pin. That's a little bit of a trouble. For example, to have uh, the blinking system uh, functioning, the, um, it was using the same port as the button, so I had to get rid of the button to be able to work, and also to use the uh, LCD uh, screen. It's based on another, another connection that is already used, so you have to do a little bit of a trick to work, but it's feasible. So you're telling me that you have to connect it to the uh, uh, Parker? Uh, well, to the voice hat, yeah. With a, a cable? Yeah, yeah, pretty much like... Can you do it remotely? Uh, I mean, with Wi-Fi or something like this? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, it's using, it has Bluetooth and it has Wi-Fi as well. So if, it's on, if you use it in your own home and you have components that is using, maybe, for example, if you have a security camera that is providing a REST API to retrieve images from there, uh, yeah, you can connect them with no problem. I was just searching for the slide, but I lost my... Mm -hmm. No. You see, you can connect everything on that point. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Pas de problème. Okay. <laughs> um, et la qualité du micro Super bonne. Super bonne. Et comparé au Google Home Ça dépend si je fais la réponse en anglais. Oui, vas-y. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the sound quality for the microphone is pretty good. Uh, you can uh, put the box into the middle of your house and you can be five meters away if you speak out clear enough and if there's not too much noise. It, it catches it up. Uh, I don't own yet a Google Home, uh, a true Google Home. I you know, I started with the Maker way, um, and uh, it, but the, the sound quality is really good, especially the one with probably with the kit. Uh, the kit, yeah, right. Uh, for the information has been for a long, long time uh, unavailable. I mean, that guy is very lucky because I got it when they were still um, the boxes were still available. That was in May. It's only now, since the beginning of October, that Google is releasing uh, a new version of the kit that is much more uh, available in terms of disponibility in the various stores. So if you go to some of the well-known stores for Raspberry Pi components, uh, you can get pretty much the same thing. Okay, thank you. But All right, well, thank you very much for coming and enjoy the live talk.